featuring our first match of the Latin America region on the region finals broadcast. We have got a colossal and a Rillaboom jumping out for Guido and on the opposing side of the field. It's another Rillaboom but paired up with Zashin. Yeah, we've seen the Zashin now. It's, it's, it's in a little bit of a tricky spot because obviously the Rillaboom from the opposing side of the field on Guido's side is, you know, threatening with a potential fake out. And if the, the, the Colossal does decide to go for the Gigantamax here, it can really start to put some damage on uh, Gabriel's side of the field. But he's got to be aware of that, you know. You can't just let that happen lightly. Maybe trying to get something onto the field that can kind of mitigate that a little bit further. Maybe his own Colossal can come in or maybe even the Urshifu. But again, if you're bringing your own Urshifu onto the field at this stage of the game, you've got to really worry about that Rillaboom on Guido's side of the field. So I really like the, 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 the lead of the Colossal with the Rillaboom. It does then come down to the speed ties with whose Rillaboom is faster if you're going to go for that fake out wall turn one. Yeah, it applies pressure and starts the mind games off early in the set. But I like this adjustment here by Greedo bringing in the Incineroar, able to apply that Intimidate to both these physical attackers. It's going to bring the Zashin right back down to neutral and stop the Rillaboom being such a threat. Fake out as well from Greedo's Rillaboom into the Zashin means that it's not going to be able to move this turn. And Rillaboom able to capitalize and go for a U-turn here, dealing all almost like a third of damage there to the opposing Rillaboom and allows Gabrielle the opportunity to start switching around his ball position as well. Yeah, that's the, that's the big plus here, you know, the, the, with the Incineral coming in from Guido's side of the field, it is a nice play because it obviously mitigates the, the attack boost from the Zassian's Intrepid Sword ability. So, um, the, the problem is now that Gabrielle's got that damage initially onto the Rillaboom, which definitely makes things a bit easier for um, Gabrielle going forward in this match, especially if you're taking a step further forward in, in dealing with the Rillaboom. You've got to be aware that, that there is fake-out pressure from the Incineroar this turn, but if, if you leave the Incineroar on the field now, you are kind of in the position where you could take a G-Max Volcalith, and that would probably be the end of Cin Incineroar going into this turn. So you don't really want to lose something too early on, especially at this stage in the match. That's the thing, setting up the Volklith as well, you then get the residual rocks effects that are just going to start chipping away. And we've seen that in Players Cup 1 and Players Cup 2, how beneficial that is and how much it can sway a match. So it's something you have to be wary of. As mentioned, the Incineral doesn't want to take that, that's going to be able to pick up a solid KO against it. And again, even something that potentially could be in the back, like the Lapras, doesn't want to be a switch in to take that either. Switch is happening on Gabrielle's side, that we're going to see the Urshifu join the field here. This will allow it to apply some pressure with those water type moves, um, essentially something like a surging strikes targeting you down into that incineral that allows the colossal opportunity to maybe try and target down this opposing rillaboom instead and remove it from the fray of course as well we know that the colossal loves to have a little bit of synergy with a weakness policy so we could see the urshifu joining in order to help set that up but rillaboom instead just going to go for a protect doesn't want to take potential max flare or anything at this stage so far in the set incineral deciding to get in on out of there as well going for that u-time doing a little bit of damage to the opposing Urshifu and breaking the Focus Sash on that Pokemon as well. That could be critical as the turn goes on. Yeah, definitely. And I, I like the U-turn here. You're not utilizing the fake out. The pressure was too much anyway. And then Gabrielle taking the opportunity to switch out the, the Zacian so it can come in later on and take advantage of that attack boost. But um, getting the Urshifu on the field now is a really important step because now you're going to be able to kind of get the jump onto um, the Rillaboom here because your Aqua Jet potentially will go before the Grassy Glide get that activation and now knowing that it's just protected that last turn you can quite freely target into that slot the problem is now is of course that we see that the colossal come in and take a, a gmax vocally uh <laughs> that it allows incinero to kind of come back onto the field and pressure again at least on the urshifu side with fake out support I mean, it does just show that Colossal doesn't always need the weakness policy activated to do absolute destruction out here on the field. And I think being able to remove the threat of Guido also going for that own Colossal here does just allow you to have that extra bit of dominance going into these next couple of turns. Like you said, Lee, the Incineral is going to be able to come back and can pressure with something like that fake out going forward. The Intimidate obviously going down onto the Urshifu isn't the most ideal of situations, but I would definitely say having the Colossal here once again facing down against this Incineral does make the Incineral quake in its little feet a little bit. Yeah, definitely, and especially with the, the residual damage is kind of chipping away every turn as well with the uh, the G-Max Volcalith. The Incineroar isn't going to be sticking around too much longer if that is the target, but you're kind of thinking now with the, the Rillaboom out onto the, on the field, it has protected that last turn. It's an easy target to go after, but we still don't know what Guido's last Pokemon in the back is right now. We have seen the Colossal. Um, it has unfortunately been taken out without really being able to do much, but um, Gabrielle doing everything right in this match, you know, in, in position 
positioning the, the Colossal and, and Dino, uh, Gigantamax in it at the perfect time to really make it very impactful and, and the Pokemon that we kind of come to know it for and how it, how it operates on such a, a good and high level. Exactly, and the Urshifu just going to go for a Detect here quite wise with that Fake Up pressure being there on the field. However, Rillaboom also going to go here for Protect, doesn't want to take a potential fire type move from this opposing um, Colossal. And Sunoro, however, going to go for the Flare Blitz here. Does a little bit of damage, but critically activates the Steam Engine. Won't be able to activate the Weakness Policy attached, but now Colossal Speed will be sky high thanks to its Steam Engine ability. Um, the Max Flare is going to come out into that Rillaboom. Still, there's a decent chunk throughout the Protect, and I think the the critical thing here is being able to set up that sun as well, meaning these fire type attacks, both of the Colossal and you have to remember of the opposing Urshifu, are going to be able to deal out more damage as well. It also allows the Colossal to breathe a little bit easier, knowing that a potential Aqua Jet from the Urshifu is going to be dealing reduced damage in the sun. Yeah, and the nice thing now, especially about the grassy terrain for Gabriella, is it, it looks as though that the, the Urshifu now has, you know, got its full health back. So that focus that should be intact now, uh, once again, uh, just giving that Urshifu a little bit of security, especially against grassy glides. So if it wants to choose to go down a different route, like a close combat, maybe into the Incineroar this turn, it's got the option to do that, although you don't really need to do that with the Colossal on the field. <laughs> uh, it might be a good opportunity to try and get that Aqua Jet uh, activated and, and try and get the weakness policy going on the Colossal. If you need that extra damage, I don't think at this point you're really going to need to. Well, we see the forfeit being locked in there. So, you know, I think you're right. Maybe it doesn't need to get the Colossal all activated up. But, I mean, phenomenal play there with um, Gabriel Agati being able to take game one there in that set in very dominant fashion. And, you know, once again, it looks like Colossal is doing great things in these Players' Cup tournaments. Yeah, definitely, and you know the the way that, that Gabriel like really kind of piloted the the the, um, the colossal there was just really nice to see because he got it into a spot where it made it very difficult for um, Guido to kind of get any sort of momentum back in the game. It was like mm. almost the race of who could get their Colossal uh, <laughs> set up first. And I think the big turning point was obviously Guido switching in his Colossal um, and then Gabriel kind of capitalizing on that and taking it down, which really didn't leave too many options after that. And you just had to bide your time. As we saw with the Urshifu to the point where uh, you were able to get the Aqua Jet off if you wanted, or you could just attack uh, straight up both both sides of the field and made it very difficult. But that's, that's one of the, 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 the drawbacks with facing Colossal, you know, it's such a powerhouse. It's one of those Pokemon mm -hmm. that you really need to have checks for and you need to have ways for not just turn one, but turn two and turn three and turn four and really mm -hmm. keep that in your mind as you're going forward. And that's what makes it very difficult, of course. Yeah, and it also makes it difficult um, for Greedo to really adapt by potentially maybe trying to bring in something like that Lapras. We know something like a powerful Max Geyser can be known to kind of completely wipe Colossal off the battlefield. But then when you know that there's something like a Rillaboom there as well, so you could have Rillaboom and Colossal, and Colossal can still do a huge amount of damage to Lapras with those GMAX Volcaliths, it just puts Lapras in a little bit of a precarious situation. So it's going to be really interesting to see how our players are going to adapt going into game two. Yeah, a hundred percent agree with you. I think the Lapras on on paper feels like a good option for sure, but then when you look at the options that Gabrielle's got, it doesn't really feel like it's going to be very easy to get it to get it going because of the th the threats like the Rillaboom, you know, even Urshifu threats it, even Zacian threatens it. So it's not an easy Pokemon to bring in this match. Although you would say if you can just manage to kind of capitalize with one Max Geyser onto um, onto the G Max Colossal, then it would mm -hmm. be enough. Well, let's jump into game two and see exactly how this action is going to go down in this winner's round six match. I wonder if Colossal Lee is going to make an appearance. It's going to be Rillaboom and Zashin out for Greedo in the leads, whereas on the opposing side for Gabriel, it's going to be Zashin and Rillaboom. So whether there's a Colossal in the mix is still yet to be revealed. Yeah, still yet to be revealed. Guido just not wanting to lead with it this turn as we do see the, the double Zacian leading now. It could be a bit of a dead turn here and it's I think it's which player capitalizes on this position because obviously fake out is present on both rally booms. Do we just see a fake out from uh, Gabrielle's side into Guido's Zacian and the same mm -hmm. from Guido's into Gabrielle and then you're kind of in that same position. But which player is going to try and capitalize in this situation and say maybe, well, okay, I'll, I'll switch out my Zacian here because I'm confident that, uh, you know, like we saw in game one and get my Colossal onto the field and then it can start putting on a bit more pressure then. So maybe both players do that, maybe not. And maybe one player looks a little bit further ahead and says, okay, well, um, I'm going to fake out knowing that the speed tiers, the information I got from game one and maybe fake out the opposing Rillaboom here and then try mm. and attack into that Zacian slot. But we're not, not seeing that, just a bit of a, <laughs> a, 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 an, 
a, a kind of a non-turn here with just fake out making everything not move at all <laughs> yeah a little bit of kind of a i guess a safe strategy in a way because you know that sashin doesn't have the capability to be able to dynamax and fake out doesn't affect dynamax pokemon so you know it's a pretty safe mode to be able to go for a fake out into that slot like you said it's kind of a, a null and void turn zero but now this is where the mind game starts to come in and it's going to depend how our trainers have trained their pokemon who's going to be speedier who's going to attack first yeah, because these behemoth blades, you know, they're going to hit very hard and potentially pick up knockouts on the opposing Zacian. So whoever wins the speed tie here could potentially take a big lead uh, in this next turn, depending on what both players do if they decide to keep their Zacians in and kind of go for that that, that speed off and almost duel to see who will come out <laughs> on top. And it really puts one player ahead of the other if one someone does lose their Zacian this turn. So I, 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 if you've got the switch in in the back, it makes sense to try and um, get, get something like the incentive and if you're if you're Guido to mitigate the intimi uh, that intimidate the attack boost of course which we are seeing which definitely helps deal with the opposing Zacian on Gabrielle's side of the field a little bit easier yeah a wise play if you've got access to intimidate um in the back it's good to bring it forward against these two physical attackers neutralize the Zacian a little bit and stop the Relivium from being such a threat as well but it looks like it is the Zacian on Guido's side is able to move first connect onto the opposing Zacian does a huge chunk of damage and the Zacian with the Bayonet Blade on Gabriel's side remember it is back to neutral doesn't have its plus one attack from Intrepid Sword so it's going to be dealing significantly less damage there isn't really too much in the damage output there really between the two you know you can see gabriel's really trained his uh, zassian extremely defensively here to be able to take that plus one uh, behemoth blade there and um, it's still got enough attack power um to do considerably a decent amount of damage back even with the intimidate taken into account but now you see gabriel's taking the opportunity to not opt for the intimidate support but opt for his colossal like he did in game one so he's in a, a good spot now to click that gigantamax button and start utilizing Colossal. Has to be a little bit careful around what the Zacian does, of course, <laughs> because it still will threaten and hit pretty hard with the Behemoth Blade or, um, uh, you know, Sacred Sword or Cross Combat, whichever option mm. it's got on, the, on um, uh, those move slots. Well, that's the thing, Colossal has options too as well. It could go for that G-Max Volcalith right down into the Incineroar, you know, pick up a KO against it or maybe try and catch a Pokemon switching in. Or you could always go for something like the Max Flare into the Zacian and just remove that formidable Pokemon from the fray. Particularly if you don't have an Intimidate user in the back, it could be a nice way to remove the sort of plus one attack stat there on the opposing um, Zacian just by removing it from the field. You no longer have to worry about it. But Gabriel's going to be Dynamaxing, of course, the Colossal. It's going to be interesting to see which move he is locked into. I didn't quite catch it as he was locking in his moves. So I wonder which one he's going to be able to take down. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think, like, if you were really concentrating on something, you'd probably want to try and go after the opposing Zacian and remove that from the field because either way, it is plus one and it is a big threat. Uh, but this is the problem. If you attack it now and you don't have the Colossal set up with that steam engine, you're going to be moving after it and you're not going to be able to really uh, make the most out of your turn by just hitting into a substitute, whereas going into the Incineroar is a nice way to get some big damage off and you start that residual damage with those um, the G-Max Volcalith here. And even if the substitute's up, <laughs> at this point you're in a great spot because of the the residual damage kind of chipping down the zassian anyway which the substitute just doesn't protect it from yeah really free substitute there for the zash and of course the cinema hanging on as well from that g-max vocalist um you know you know weakness policy has not been activated on that colossal as of yet um, but you can see already the damage, like you said, Lee, even for the Zacian behind the substitute, it's not going to be safe from those rocks. And Incineroar's health is dwindling away as well. And if it's not holding a berry item, um, then, you know, it survived the attack. It's going to be an assault vest. It doesn't have that extra berry to kind of regain its HP. And those rocks are going to be able to chip away. And the rocks don't care if you're wearing an assault vest. They're still going to do the same damage. They do not care at all, Lou, no. And I think this is the turn where, you know, you're in a really nice spot if you are Colossal because you, with Gabriel, you know, you've got the options to just start throwing out some big attacks here and not really worry too much about what the opposing Zacian is going to be doing because I think you, you can just maybe bide your time and allow the, the, the residual damage two turns and that, that Zacian is going to be gone and the Incineroar is going to be gone. But at the same time, you don't want to give Zacian too much room because I think, you know, the, the more turns it has where it's able to attack and put damage on the field, it's, it's not great for you, especially when it is sitting at plus one still. 
The Behemoth Blade does find its mark there on the Colossal. Does a huge chunk of damage to it. Of course, Behemoth Blade will double in power when it connects into a Gigantamax Pokemon or Dynamax Pokemon. Incineroar's going to get out of there, going for that U-turn into the opposing Rillaboom. It does allow Guido the opportunity to bring it in later, go for another one of those Intimidates, and obviously can apply maybe some fire damage pressure onto that opposing Rillaboom a little bit later in the game. But I think having the option to switch it with your position, bring in the Rillaboom of your own, does just allow Guido that little bit more flexibility. G-Max Volcalith, however, is going to come out from this colossal once more find its mark on the rillaboom and oh wait rillaboom is barely hanging on thanks wow. to that critical hit what destruction this colossal is doing yeah that critical hit is huge for gabriel because it means that now the residual damage here is going to be enough to take the rillaboom out and that's not really an option for it going forward so um the the double fake out support that guido was kind of relying on is just one fake out support now with the incineral it does mean this incineral can come back onto the field of course this turn um and with the the substitute still in effect on zassian that's great but again like we've said another round of the um the residual damage from the g max volcliff is going to be probably enough to pick up the knockout there and uh, not mean that zassian is really an issue anymore now the one thing that guido does still have going for him is potentially his own colossal in the back we haven't mm -hmm. seen it but we are about to just it is hitting the field now which he can take advantage of but you've got to get through at least one more turn of, of gabrielle's before you probably want to make any moves yeah, and Guido does still have access to their Dynamax as well. So we could potentially see a late game Dynamax that we know can really turn the tables in a match as well. But like you said, Lee, there's still one more turn of Gabriel's Colossal to go. And Gabriel really kind of thinking over his moves there about which Pokemon he wants to target down. We know that the Volcalith can pick up a solid KO there against the opposing Colossal. But if Guido wants to potentially um, Dynamax it up, then it's going to be able to take that attack. And then that allows Guido the opportunity to retaliate, maybe try and set up a Volcalith of their own. Gabriel really thinking about what to do here and has opted to go for a more, um, I think, defensive strategy there. All will be revealed in a moment. But first of all, we've got to see that um, Dynamax animation coming out from Guido. Yeah, and you can see that the, the Max Guard is going to come out from, from Gabriel's side of the field, and that just allows it to survive an extra turn because otherwise there's Asian in a, a, in a great spot here to get that Behemoth Blade off into it and p pick up the knockout, which is, you know, not something that Gabriel wants to allow to happen for free. Uh, without the Steam Engine boost, you're going to be in a, a really tough spot and uh, just making the most out of that Rillaboom with a Grassy Glide into the opposing Colossal. That's very true. And Colossal going for that Max Flare, targeting down into the Rillaboom that dared to do some chip damage with the Grassy Glide. Just going to be able to eliminate it straight away from the field. Of course, it's going to set up the sun as well. That's going to boost up those fire time moves of Incineroar and the Colossal on Guido's side. Incineroar wants to jump back into the action. Um, and it may well have the opportunity to, as Zashin has now been KO'd thanks to the residual damage of those rocks. Yeah, and now that, that it'll be interesting to see if the Zassian comes back in for, for Gabriel because it's going to have the attack boost. We've already seen how much damage that, that the Guido's did to Gabriel, so it's going to be able to do some significant damage um, to... Um, to Guido's Colossal that's now set up, but you can see as well that he does have the Urshifu as an option, so you could potentially, especially with the Sun up, go for that Aqua Jet and really take advantage of the, the Steam Engine and Weakness Policy uh, options there. But the Zassian feels like probably the, the option that you want to kind of rely on a little bit more, but you've got to be scared again from Guido's side of the field. Still got access to setting up the G-Max Volcalith, can activate those, and that will slowly start chipping down at something like Zassian, and the health that it's on at the minute, it's really not going to be able to stick around for too many turns, so you need to utilize it as quick as possible. Um, so maybe it might be worth delaying it, especially until that fake out's kind of burned from the other side of the field. Exactly, and you can see here as well the Incineroar jumping right back into the fray. Zashin as well going to rejoin the action here for Gabrielle Agati. And Intrepid Sword being able to get up its boost, but of course um, Intimidate from Incineroar just going to be able to counteract that. A little bit bittersweet for the Zashin. Yeah, a little bit. You know, that's maybe one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of keep it in the back here because I think um, getting the Urshifu onto the field now is going to be a little bit more difficult. But it, um, you kind of want that Zassian in a spot where it is going to be able to uh, really get his, the maximum damage onto the opposing Colossal. But again, you know, you've got Urshifu in the back that can come in. It's got search and strikes. It can, you know, if you can stall out these max turns from Guido's side of the field, Urshifu is more than capable of dealing with an Incineroar and a Colossal at the same time so you know Gabrielle has still got options here you've got to contend with fake out this turn which you know Zassian and Colossal are both going to be you know threatened by going into this next turn 
Exactly, Zashin going for that Sacred Sword, connecting onto the opposing Incineroar, and it's able to pick up the KO. Um, but Incineroar going to be returning, returning to Guido's Pokeball there, as Colossal goes for that Max Flare, targeting down to the opposing Zashin. So, a lot of destruction going around on this particular turn, lots of KOs being made. But the one Pokemon I still see standing strong are Colossals, Lee. Both of them are still here on the field, and the Colossal and Gabriel side is going to be going for that Solar Beam, using the Sun to be able to make a two turn charge attack turn into a one turn charge attack. Yeah, that, you know, there's one big Colossal left and one little Colossal left. Let's see who comes out <laughs> on top. But I think the, 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 the advantage that Gabriel has here is that he's got that Urshifu. The one drawback would be, of course, uh, that the sun is up. So your Surgeon Strike, so your Aqua Jet aren't going to be hitting as hard. You do have options of close combat, of course, and you probably do have a Focus Sash to kind of fall back on. And, you know, uh, the G-Max Volklet at this stage is not really going to benefit you too much. The residual damage will, but are you going to be able to kind of have that that much time if you're Guido to be able to to allow that residual damage to kind of chip away at Urshifu considering the ability on the Urshifu it doesn't really care about protects you know mm -hmm. you can max guard but if you max guard here you're not really getting much uh, benefit out of your, your gigantic max turns which you've already seen Guido kind of use a max guard on one of those as well anyway that's the thing, Urshifu able to break through protective measures does mean you have to adapt. And the surging strikes, they are guaranteed critical hits and there are three of them to contend with. Colossal, however, isn't going to mind taking that first one. It activates the steam engine and the weakness policy as well. So if it is able to survive these surging strike attacks, it's going to be in a very well primed position to do that huge chunk of damage. We've seen the second one, here's the third one, and it is indeed going to be able to survive out this turn and be in a good position to retaliate here. It's going to go for that G-Max Volcalith and target down into the opposing Urshifu. Does take down to about 32 HP remaining, but of course the rocks being in play as well are going to be able to deal with that Urshifu by the end of the turn. Yeah, you would imagine the Urshifu is going to go down to that now and uh, the sun really helping the, the, the opposing Colossal take that really well and you know, the, is the Urshifu going to be able to survive just about on 3 <laughs> HP? Um, which is probably just enough now for, for Gabrielle to lock it up. And that is so close, that survival there. Um, and because of its ability, obviously, um, it's going to be able to just Aqua Jet and uh, mm -hmm. kind of take the game. But how unfortunate for Guido, who pulled the match to be so close <laughs> at this point as well, Lou. Yeah, an amazing comeback and Colossal really reigning supreme. Urshifu, however, for Gabriella Gatti, going to be able to pick up the final KO and take this winner's round six match. Mini Gabriella Gatti is the winner of the set and will continue in our winner's bracket. So huge congratulations there to Gabriella.